Welcome back uh, for Unit 6-4 here. It's going to be our second session on completing the square. And uh, this one's going to get uh, down, right down to the brass tacks here and how we exactly do this. Given just about any equation we're dealing with, they're still going to play nicely and let us work with integers for a while. In short order, we'll get into some irrational answers and so on, but I'll be there when we go through that together. All right, how about a math career here for you? How about an urban planner? Urban planner. Urban planners develop long and short-term plans for the use of the land and growth of urban, suburban, and rural communities. Uh, down at the bottom there you can see that this work includes forecasting the future needs of the population. So you can you can imagine as complex as cities are that they need a lot of really uh, well-trained people to plan and uh, work with the environment around them, whether it be rivers or, or mountains or coastlines or what have you. So good job there. You can tell the salary structure there is pretty healthy and uh, seemed like to me to be a pretty fun job if you like to work with uh, computers and planning and estimation and, and civil engineers and so on. Alright, we're still in standard 14 and uh, today we will be again solve quadratic equations by completing the square. This time we're going to take the step beyond finding C. We saw that previously where we cut B in half and then squared it to find C. We're going to be applying that now to just full, complete equations. So, real quick over, overview of some uh, vocabulary. Perfect square trinomial, again, is going to be that A plus B uh, quantity squared there, or the quantity A minus B squared. Either way, we end up with this form right down here. And we'll be using this kind of idea as we go forward today. All right, so maybe on your own here, can you come up with one example of a perfect square trinomial? This will kind of give us a, a connection between B and C specifically. So maybe you can come up with one on your own. I've got a few here for us. How about uh, this one? X squared plus 4X plus 4. Take a look at the next one. And I underlined uh, the B and the C terms. So consider how they're all related. Remember previously we discovered something that if you have a perfect square trinomial, if you take this B term here for 4, for example, and you cut it in half, and then you take that quantity and square it, you end up with this right here. Isn't 4 divided by 2, 2? And 2 squared, of course, is 4. How about negative 6 divided by 2? Well, that's going to give you negative 3, but if you square that, we end up with C here. And all the way down the line, you divide this by 2 and square it, divide this by 2, squared and so on. So every time we have a perfect square trinomial, cut B in half, square that answer, and you'll get the C value. Okay, Kind of a, a unique property there about perfect square trinomials. So let's see here, how about, what's our next one? Of course completing the square is going to be that idea that you have perfect squares and they can take different forms, and this is again from previous lesson, where we can have unknowns or knowns and integers and so on. And we know what the area is uh, from previous studies. But now what happens is we have this missing piece here. We need to fill that in so we can get that square and figure out what this would be. So looking down here at the bottom, if we have x squared plus 6x, you see where the 6x has come from? I'll change this to red here. Here's your x squared. And here's your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's your 6x. What's the constant that's missing here? Well, again, if we divide by 2 and square that, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Square, you'll get your answer of 9, of course. All right, so now let's uh, just watch this one, okay? Uh, this, just watch, sit back, relax. I'll do all the work here, but just watch and see how we do this. We're given an equation, x squared plus 8x equals 20. So there's some specific steps we'll take to make sure that we're doing this exactly right. So again, just watch. We'll have one to practice here in a minute. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, follow the following steps. We're going to take x squared plus 8x equals 20, and we're actually going to make room for c. Now, we don't see c sitting there. I see an a and a b equals a number on the right-hand side. c is missing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make room for c by giving us a blank here on this side. We're going to add a blank on the other side as well. Now, how do we know how to find that value, which we learned previously, yes, in the previous lesson? We're simply going to take the term for b divided by 2 and square it. So if we walk through that step, 8 divided by 2, of course, is 4. 4 squared is going to be 16. So we can certainly drop a 16 here, there in that blank. But remember, it's an equation. So whatever we do to one side of an equation, 
like we do to the other to keep it balanced. So we're going to add 16 now to both sides. So how does that help us? Okay, it just makes the problem look worse right now. Watch what happens. So now simplify the right hand side. This is step four and you're going to end up with 20 plus 16 of course is 36. That looks like a pretty friendly number. We've seen that one before. And now if you look here, x squared plus 8x plus 16, if we look carefully, isn't this indeed a perfect square trinomial? If we cut positive 8 in half, we get 4, and if we square it, then we get 16. So how can we change this to look like something more user-friendly? How about we do this? We're going to just either literally or mentally factor that, and we're going to end up with x plus 4 quantity squared and now we can actually get to the answer. We're going to remove this exponent. So step six says remove the exponent. So how do we get rid of an exponent? We're going to take the square root, not of one side, but of both sides. And what we end up with is a nice easy quantity of x plus four on the left. And then we've got the square root of 36. Now you say, well, where'd this plus and minus come from? If you recall, way back in unit one, we talked about squaring numbers and if we had an unknown, a variable, we have to consider not just the positive value but the negative value as well. Both sides of zero there. So we end up with this x plus four in parentheses equals both positive and or negative six. So what do we do now? Well, this goes back to our previous lessons in unit six where we're going to take this equation and we're going to split it into two small easy to solve equations here. So this becomes x plus 4 equals positive 6 on one side and x plus 4 equals negative 6 on the other and then we just do our nice simple math. Some of this we can do mentally of course we subtract 4 from both sides and so on the left hand side we get x equals 2. On the right hand side let's subtract 4. Now be careful here because you're subtracting a negative so you end up with negative 6 subtracting negative 4 is negative 10 and do you recognize we now have two solutions? So going back to the beginning, we always talked about quadratic equations having up to two solutions, and here they are. So x is the solution set negative 10 comma 2. All right, so lots of little steps built in there. Of course, we would expect you to, to just jot those down real fast. Um, and once you've done two, three, four, half a dozen of these, it becomes pretty straightforward. Let's try one for your notebook here. x squared plus 14x equals 15 x squared plus 14x equals 15. So write that down. And now, here's what we'll do. We'll follow the following steps here. Uh, looks like step one. Make room for c by adding a blank. So let's do that. So we're going to go ahead and add a blank to the left side. And of course, if you want to, you can add one to the right side already. Step two is we're going to find the c term. So we're going to cut 14 in half. And what's 14 divided by 2? Well, we know that's going to be 7. And then we square that answer. So 7 squared is 49. We place 49 in here for C, and that'll give us that perfect square trinomial that we're looking for. When we add 49 to the left side, remember from sixth grade, you've got to add it to the right side as well. So all this stuff ties together now. And now, simplify the right-hand side. That's step four. That's pretty obvious there. We're just going to add 15 and 49 together to get 64. Now right here, step five, we're going to factor this perfect square trinomial. So this, if we cut this in half and square it, we get 49, right? So maybe you can already do this without using easy x, but if you need to use easy x, go ahead. You're going to end up with this, x plus 7 squared. The quantity x plus 7 squared is going to equal 64. Step six says remove the exponent. So how do we get rid of that exponent? We take the square root, not of one side, but of both sides. So square root that and square root that. When you, when the square root and the exponent cancel each other out, we do get x plus 7 over here, but remember on the right hand side we're going to get both a positive and negative 8. So quantity x plus 7 equals plus or minus 8. Alright, and now in the home stretch here we're going to split this into two small equations. x plus 7 equals positive 8 and x plus 7 equals negative 8. Let's get rid of that 7. The opposite of adding 7 is subtracting, so we can see pretty clearly that x is going to be 1 on the left hand side. And over here, a little more delicate because we have some negatives there. We're going to go ahead and subtract 7 from both sides. Negative 8, negative 7 combined give us negative 15. And remember to write your solution set using the brackets, and it's best to write it from least to greatest even though there's no real math law about that. 
But so x equals the set negative 15 comma 1. Don't forget what this means here is that if you were to graph this on a graphing calculator, the graph would pass through the x-intercept at negative 15 and positive 1, giving you two solutions or two roots or two zeros, etc. So that is our solution there using completing the square. All right, that's it for unit 6-4. More instruction at the top. Digital practice at the bottom there. Um, strongly recommend that you just get comfortable with this. If you spend 5, 10, 15 minutes with it, uh, you'll be a master. No problems at all. And I'll be here to help you as needed. And then uh, we'll see you pretty soon.